Hello everyone, and uh, I'd like to show you today this uh, radar tube that I've got and the circuits that I've designed and built for it. I don't have any schematics out yet because these are circuits that I uh, made a few very basic schematics for just referencing, uh, kind of a guidance more than anything, and uh, the rest of it I just kind of built as I went. And uh, the image is going to be kind of dark because I have it on manual settings at the moment. And this is as bright as I can go with the current lighting that I have in here. Uh, I could turn on more lights, but um, it will take too much time. I want to just take this in one single shot. So there is the CRT power supply and a homemade flyback transformer. Um, I got copper shielding around it, and I had a problem with eddy currents in the copper shielding eating up all my power and heating up. So I cut some slots in it, and then I realized those are in the wrong direction. So I ended up cutting one single slot that went all the way from there to the front. Oh, that's kind of out of focus. I don't have any kind of, I don't really have a good autofocus. There we go. So I just manual focus and I have to use two hands for manual focus. So yeah, if you use copper shielding on a homemade flyback transformer, you have to have it uh, open at one end. Otherwise it acts as its own winding and uh, creates its own current. In the, circular path around it um, and I can even demonstrate this by shorting a piece of metal across this gap and it will actually spark and it's a high current spark so the, the flyback transformer generates all the voltages for the tube including the heater so it's real convenient I've got an adjuster magnet here and a focusing magnet here that's actually just homemade uh, with some steel washers, piece of cardboard, and some uh, little magnets. Not neodymium magnets, just standard magnets. And a homemade steering coil. I still have a problem with the uh, beam kind of rotating as it gets to the front, probably due to my focusing magnet, so it's just, you know, something I put together for now. I'll make it better later. So we have the uh, two power supply. All it is is pulse width modulation. It's all analog, no microcontrollers. Uh, got a 7474 flip flop, LM339 and LM324, I think. And really, the circuit is overcomplicated for this, but uh, it works. I, I just kind of built it as I went. I can control the frequency, I can control the max pulse width, and I can control the voltage. And then this potentiometer here controls the brightness of the tube. Uh, I have it set to pretty good brightness right now that it doesn't burn the phosphor. Then we move on to the circuit with the fan. This side of the circuit is the plus and minus power supply. I can get it up to about 20 volts before it starts getting reaching its max current and overheating, even with the fan. And then this side is just two linear amplifier speaker amps. I think they're rated at 25 watts each, but that's that's way overkill in wattage, but I need them to be able to handle at least plus or minus 30 volts. Which I'm not even driving it at that much right now. Because the power supply just can't handle it. And I have gain, and then I'll, I'll work on making it more efficient. I think I'm going to change the uh, transformer out because it's just too small. And then I have this circuit here, which I plan on putting a preamp on, but I don't have that done yet. But this circuit... Uh, I call it the, the screen saver or the beam saver. It takes the audio input from this cable, it feeds it through directly to the uh, vertical and horizontal amplifier, and it also reads those two signals and makes sure there's a signal before turning on the uh, beam. That way it doesn't just sit there in one spot and burn a hole in the phosphor. Since this is intended to be an XY scope, a uh, crude one, just for artistic purposes, um, I want it to turn the beam off when there's no signal and no beam movement. So uh, without further ado, I'll get this camera on the tripod and set up and we'll uh, turn the circuit on via the single 12 volt power supply. Get a neon bulb there. And uh, on my phone, which will be my audio source, we'll just go ahead and play uh, Jeroby and Fenderson's Blue Spirals, that's the, the best one I found for this specific setup that I have. And there's actually a blue LED here that will turn on 
that indicates when the beam is supposed to be on. Move diagnostics. Get that on the tripod. And the uh, camera's going to get shooken around a little bit. I don't quite have full scale deflection yet uh, due to a number of issues, particularly in the uh, power supply of the uh, amplifier. There we go. Without further ado, let's get started. That's going to be too bright. I might have to restart this. I love the afterglow of this tube. It's like a uh, bluish color with a green, yellow green afterglow. And uh, you know, unfortunately, I can't really uh, change the color temperature while it's recording has started. Let me try this. And you can kind of see the blue glow there. The camera picks up the afterglow much more than the uh, what your eyes do. It's kind of weird. Let's see if I can get the uh, blue light there we go all the way on the right hand side you kind of see when the signal gets small the blue light will start blinking or it'll act like it's uh, pulse width modulating it's technically kind of is but it's kind of isn't it's kind of unintentional see it blinking there it's turning the beam off I'm actually controlling the beam with an opto isolator a uh, H17 opto isolator. It goes up to 80 volts and it's just enough voltage uh, to be able to uh, run this tube because this tube runs uh, the grid. I think it goes to minus 70 volts or 75 volts is the cutoff. And I've, I've got a 100 volt power supply and a little neon bulb in the circuit to help regulate that voltage down to around, I don't know, probably around 80 to 90 volts. This fan here doesn't really seem to affect the uh, tube too much where it's at. It doesn't uh, make it move around. It's not perfectly focused either, and as you can see, the dimensions and the uh, it's kind of skewed a little bit when it shows these squares. I think it, I think it might actually be even a, a clipping in this example because it's just reaching max deflection for the voltage I have. It's just too much for the amplifier at the moment. It didn't have enough voltage. But uh, I'll get that sorted out. I got to. Uh, in addition to that, running it at higher voltage makes the amp run much hotter and it needs a bigger heat sink. I think I got the colors pretty good. Um, I have the white balance set to uh, sunlight, which seems to be the best for this tube, or the most accurate, I should say. I think the afterglow might be just a little more yellow than what it shows on the camera. And it's done. I'll play it one more time just so there's no interruption. And uh, we've got about 34 seconds left. It's already reaching 10 minutes. That's okay. I think the beginning of this uh, demonstration is the prettiest part of it. The ending is just kind of too messy. But that's just my opinion. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.